Hi, my name is Justin Schaffan. I'm the founder here at Patch My PC. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can clean up your WSUS content folders with regards to third party updates that are no longer needed because they've been declined. Now, more specifically, we're going to primarily look at the update services packs folder with regards to saving space and deleting items that are no longer relevant. Now, before we get started uh, in showing you how we can essentially delete and clean up these folders, uh, I do want to cover both of the folders used within WSUS, just so you have an understanding of what do these folders actually do. So you know, you know how they get cleaned up and understand a bit more of the background about what they're used for. Now, the WSUS content folder, this is primarily used by clients if you're using standalone WSUS to download the third party updates. Now, if you're using Config Manager, this is going to be where you download the updates from when you put them into a deployment package and they go to your DPs for clients, for example. So if we quickly jump into the WSUS content folder to give you a little background, let's just click into one of these folders. Let's look at the E8 folder. If we look at properties of one of these CAV files that exist and we look at the signature tab, we can see this is basically just a CAV file that has been code signed using the WSUS signing certificate relevant to your environment. So uh, that's kind of the first thing that we'll note here. Now, if we were to open up that cab, we can see that we actually have the installer for the third party update that is actually being used here. So in our case, looks like this is a Plantronics Hub uh, update. Now, how that corresponds to getting downloaded, uh, let's go ahead and look in the config man console and let's do properties of one of these third party updates that have been published. Now, if we look at the content information tab, if I go ahead and copy that column, paste it over, we can see that this is one for a flash update. Now, this is essentially the download path that you would use within Config Manager to download it to a deployment package. So if we look at IIS and we look at the WSUS uh, uh, administration website, we can see that there's this content virtual directory. Now, if we were to go ahead and, and break down and look at that folder, 41 is the folder for Flash Player. We can come in here and we can click Explore. Now, if we actually click Explore, we can see that this is just taking us into the WSUS content folder and then the 41 subfolder. So these are essentially the CAB files that have been published uh, that are uh, making the update available for download into a deployment package. So if we look at that, we can see that it is in fact that Flash Player update. Now, if we look back at the WSUS content folder, we can see that the uh, number of folders here is about 250 some folders. Now, if we look back at the update services packs folder, we can actually see that number is uh, quite a bit larger. Because if you're using any type of cleanup scripts for WSUS, so for example, if you're using any of the cleanup scripts from the community, like Brian Dam has a script, for example, or if you're using some of the new functionality in Config Manager 1906 that was improved within your software update point, and then if you look at our WSUS cleanup here, so WSUS maintenance, if you've enabled like these tasks within that option, oh, I think I actually closed that out, so let me just come back here really quick. There we go. So if we look at the WSUS maintenance, we can essentially see that there's even options directly within Config Manager now, if you're on 18.06 or newer, where you can essentially clean up and remove updates. And that does a very good job at actually cleaning up the WSUS content folder. So that's where the updates actually get downloaded from. So generally speaking, if you're seeing a lot of bloat for old updates, it's probably gonna be in this update services packs where you're seeing a lot of old updates that you don't necessarily need anymore. Okay, so digging into that update services packs a little more, um, what we can see is that all these different updates are essentially corresponding to the update ID of different third-party updates that have been published. Now, for example, let's see if we can go ahead and get the update ID for one of those Flash Player updates. Let me just come back over here. We'll uh, filter by Patch My PC. And if we look over here, I'm gonna go ahead and copy that column again. And let's go ahead and paste that over here. And let's just grab that update ID field. So if we come and look at the Flash Player update that was uh, published relatively recently, if we come over here and look at the update services packs and paste that in, we can see that we've got uh, a few different folders within here. Now, uh, with regards to the way that updates get published, you're going to see that you have a folder within that ID where if you click on that, you actually have all of the files that are included within the actual cab file itself. So in our case, we have the Flash Player installer. 
And we also have a few of our binaries because we enabled some of the custom right-click options. So we include a few custom files that we can uh, use to make use of those customizations. Now, uh, back at that root level, you're also gonna see the cab file that contains those same three files. So this is gonna be, if we look at properties, the cab file that got signed using your certificate. So uh, essentially the update services packs, it's a place where the original content gets stored. This is actually important if you ever needed to like republish the update uh, in order to re-sign it with a new cert, we need to have the original file. So that's why these get put here. It's important that uh, the files stay here with regards to updates that are currently active within the environment. Now the cab file, this is where it gets staged out when it actually gets code signed. And then the last step of that is that it's gonna move that cab into the WSUS content folder in order to allow clients or the config manager site uh, or console to download that cab into a deployment package. So that's the way the WSUS content and update services packs kind of work together and why you may see that you have multiple instances of files and cabs between these two folders and it's important that they stay with regards to an update that's still active. You need this content, it's required to download the update, and the update services packs could be required for different operations that could be performed on an update that's already been published. Now, the primary issue with the update services packs folder is that there's not really any cleanup that occurs even when updates get declined. So the WSUS content will be cleaned up if you have any maintenance tasks, that are declining updates and running the cleanup wizard, for example, but the update services packs just kind of keeps updates around uh, forever. And um, there is actually, to give you a background on what we're gonna be doing uh, to actually clean this up, uh, we're currently in the WSUS update services folder and program files and then the tools directory. Now there is a command within WSUS util that is called list unreference package folders. Now, this is not really documented that well, but if we were to go and uh, basically paste this in and run it, what this is going to do is this is a command that's gonna go compare all of the different folders available, so all the different update ID folders within the update services packs, and it's gonna see whether there are any folders that exist that are not currently valid as a published software update for the update ID. So that command might take a few minutes to run, and we now see that we have like one folder showing up uh, within here that is showing that it's unreferenced. Now, um, the big thing here is that we have like a large number of updates that are essentially declined, but they're not considered unreferenced. So based on uh, our experience, just doing some deep dives here, it seems like an update is only considered unreferenced when it actually does not exist within the WSUS uh, database. So what we can do to actually clean these up so that it will trigger them to become unreferenced is that we have an option within our publishing tool. Now this specific function does not require you to have a license. You could actually do this maybe if you wanna clean up some other third-party updates for like drivers or things like that. Um, but within our publishing service, under the advanced tab, we're gonna have a section where you can run a um, modify published updates wizard. So you're gonna to wanna to come down here to the modify published updates wizard, and that's gonna be where you wanna click run wizard. Now what this is going to do, it's gonna show you a list of every single third party update that is currently published to WSUS. So we can see we actually have about 1700 and some updates that are currently available within WSUS. Now what we can do here is we can filter by specific vendors. So for example, if you're using Patch My PC, you probably wanna put a vendor where Patch My PC uh, is the vendor filter. Now, what we can do to actually clean these up is we also have a declined uh, filter. Now, you would not wanna just come back in here and start deleting updates, uh, especially for updates that are currently active. You wanna make sure that you're only deleting updates that essentially are not needed anymore. And if you're running cleanup operations, uh, the decline status is probably a good filter because when an update gets declined, um, so just a little background on how updates essentially get superseded. Um, if we come in here and uh, do our software update point, we will automatically supersede an update. And then uh, depending on your software update point supersedence for how long you wanna keep updates 
uh, to still be superseded and available within Config Man. In our case, it's every one month. So once an update's been superseded for one month, as long as you have your WSUS maintenance that's going to decline superseded updates enabled, they would essentially get declined after one month of being superseded. So then once that uh, maintenance task runs after each sync, you would essentially have these updates that have been superseded for a month now be considered declined. Now, if you're using any of the community scripts that also decline superseded updates, that will work similar to the way that the new feature in 1906 of Config Manager can decline superseded updates. So in our case, uh, this is essentially the updates that we've deemed that are old and they're declined, meaning that they're no longer active uh, within the config man console. Now, uh, one thing to note is that you probably will not see the delete option unless you configure a registry value under HQ local machine software, patch my PC publishing service, and you need to create a new D word 32 bit value that is called enable delete updates and set it to one. So by default, that is not enabled. The reason for that is we had some customers that may delete active updates. And what can happen is if you delete an active update and you still have it enabled for publishing, uh, it will essentially publish with the same update ID and it could potentially cause a lot of hash issues. So we basically had a more advanced option where we only enable this delete option if you configure that value and you really should only use delete for specific scenarios like this, for example. So what we're going to do, we can see that we have about 1,350 updates that are declined uh, out of that 1,800 or so that we had before. So I'm going to go ahead and click select all. And this may take a couple seconds, depending on how uh, many updates that you have visible here. All right, so we now have all the declined updates selected. And now we want to go ahead and choose the delete option. Now, just be sure that these are, in fact, updates that you've deemed either declined or old that you no longer want to keep within your config man console as well as your WSUS database. So I'm going to go ahead and choose delete uh, and we'll choose yes on the delete option. And then we can see that's going to go through and delete all these updates from the WSUS database using the WSUS API to delete third party updates. We'll pause it while this finishes. All right, so we can see that we deleted uh, 1,353 updates. So we'll go ahead and uh, choose our filter and let's just do all decline status now and we can see that we're actually down to about 375 updates that are now published under the patch my pc vendor now let's go ahead and come back into that command prompt that we had and let's just run the wsus util list unreferenced uh, package folders again now one thing to note is that this command in and of itself isn't really all that helpful for actually deleting the updates because um, it's really just listing them out. Now, if you really wanted to, you could essentially run this command and you could like pipe it out to a text file where you can see all the different folders that are unreferenced. So we can see that when we ran it the second time, now that we uh, deleted all those updates using our utility, we can see we're getting a ton of updates that exist within that update services packs folder for those update IDs but these IDs no longer exist within the WSUS database because they were declined updates that we then deleted using our utility. Now, um, back in our tool, so if you actually wanna clear these up, um, the easiest method is going to be within that same advanced tab, we have a option that says show unreferenced WSUS folders. Now, what this is gonna do, it's essentially on the back end, it's running the same WSUS util, but we're exporting all those folders into a UI that's gonna show you specifically what folders are uh, unreferenced, meaning they were deleted and they are no longer needed, as well as the size. So this is actually quite helpful because you can see like the file of the update and then uh, the size of the update for those actual uh, unreferenced updates. From here, we could do something like, so for example, if we look at the Docker installer, just that installer alone, is almost two gigs just for a single update. So you can see you know, where this could uh, potentially be a lot of content for these declined updates if you're not deleting them and um, then running the cleanup. So let's go ahead and select all. So we can see that we actually have about 517 folders that are unreferenced now in the update services packs, and it's about 82 gig. So we're gonna go ahead and select all and then simply choose delete. And if I come over to the folder while it's deleting, we'll see that we're currently at 790 folders. This should be qu pretty quick once we click delete here. 
and we'll go ahead and delete all those unreferenced folders from the update services packs. So we can see that we're now down to about 273 items within that, for example. So I believe before we were somewhere around um, maybe 150 gig or more for the two folders. Uh, I think it might've been a, even closer to about 200 maybe. And now we're down to about 86 uh, between both the WSUS content and the update services packs folder. Now um, that's essentially how you can go through. You can delete updates that are declined or no longer needed. And then you can actually run our tool that's gonna delete them from the update services packs. Now, based on our testing, if you go through and just delete the updates, um, we haven't seen that the WSUS cleanup wizard actually will clean up the update services packs. Based on our testing, the only way to really do that is to either run the command WSUS util and then export the folders and then run like a script to delete them or to use our tool. Now, if you wanna save even more space, if your WSUS content folder is on a drive where you can enable data deduplication, you can enable that. And we've seen within our labs, it's saved more than half of the space within these two folders because we do have a bit of duplication between the downloaded files and the cabs between these two folders. So if you wanted to save uh, even more space, you can probably reduce it by about 50 more percent if the WSUS content is on a volume where you can enable data deduplication. I hope this video was helpful and thank you for watching.